everyone, thanks for joining us again. We're going to be doing a quick kit review of the MPC B-Wing and uh, I'll have been doing a uh, build review on the same as well so stay tuned towards the end of that uh, we'll show you one that we've completed but uh, for the time being let's just let you know what to expect when you uh, open up the box so you'll see these on uh, eBay and Amazon and a few other bits and pl uh, other places but um, typically they really are overpriced you'll find on eBay they go for quite a quite a, a substantial amount of money, and they're they're not worth. They're not they're not really collectible. They they made a lot of them. There's still plenty of them around. Um, so save your money. Try and find a, a cheaper one. They do come up, but um, they're certainly not worth you know 50, 60, 70 bucks is what you see them on there. But let's just show you uh, why. So these are an older kit. Uh, these are you know the, what, what's the year on this? 83. Yeah, 83. So. Uh, Older kits, uh, snap tight kits, so made for a younger audience. Um, you don't, they're not not great. You know, they're not all, totally awful, but they're not great. Uh, and that's pretty much what you, you sort of expect from the NPC range. Um, those of you that have, may have built some of the other ones before will, will certainly understand what I'm talking about. Um, with the actual box itself, so we'll just show you what you get. You get a uh, a flight stand. Just to sit the model on, uh, and it's actually got a, a B wing uh, canopy there as well as an X wing canopy, uh, which is quite curious. Obviously, put them on the same mold, uh, but the B wing canopy there. Now, just quick note on these: some of these you'll get will be tinted like this, um, others will be clear. Uh, it's pot luck as to which is which, really. I, if anyone knows how to tell the difference between what you're going to get in the kit, let me know. But uh, they they all seem to be um, either or, so I can never never figure out what I'm going to get until you open it. Uh, <clears throat> clear parts are not bagged. None of the parts inside the box will actually be bagged. They're all loose. Uh, so if you are going to buy one, try and get it with the cellophane around it still, just to make sure that everything's there. Um, pretty simple, really. There's not a, a huge amount to them. Uh, as you can see, there's the, just basic parts now. The models themselves, the, or the model itself, the detail's actually not too bad. It's actually pretty good for a, a small kit. It's not, it's not, not a massive kit. Just excuse the paint on my hand. There, I've been busy painting away today. I just noticed that. Um, as I was saying, the, the detail's not too bad. There are quite a lot of issues with it, though. So if you have a look up here, for example, you can see straight off the bat, you can see those sink marks um, on those parts there. Now, it's not too bad on this part here. Um, that's generally pretty well hidden when the models put together but there are a lot of a lot of areas on the kit uh, where you'll find sink marks and I started puttying them up on the one that I made and it seemed like every time I thought I was done I'd find another one uh, they're everywhere so you'll find them uh, on this section here so you get the uh, mold seams as well as sink marks on that piece it was a real real pain to um, tie that up to get it get it neat, get it neat. You'll find them on the um, either side of these parts on here. Um, you know that was just frustrating, but pretty simple uh, assembly. There's not a huge amount to this kit uh, as a snap tight kit. Once again, so just looking at the other sprue here. Uh, once more, you got the sink marks there. It's probably a little bit hard to see on the camera, but uh, trust me, they are there. It's just in between those two little squares. Um, a few other bits and pieces down the end, so you, you'll find when you put them together, you'll find you'll you'll spot most of them. Um, that's pretty much it. A couple couple of bits here and there. Uh, now with the with the instructions, just give you a quick look at those. All right, so it's going to help me go to the first page. All right, so you can see how it all goes together. Uh, obviously, paint your figure and cockpit and everything like that before you put it in and, and get it all going. Uh, and away you go. Now one thing I varied in the construction and I did it almost identical to how it's put here uh, but one thing I did do differently is these little engines so you've got a little backing plate I'll just find that for you okay so here's your little backing plate there and that goes uh, you, your four little engines stick into that 
uh, and you put that uh, in it ends up in the back of this piece here when you join those two there's another piece that's similar to this and you join them together and you'll end up with your little engines sitting away in your little area here with the backing plate sitting about there now um, I left them out till the very very last they were the last thing that I did on the model I did all the painting did everything else and then then put those in um, just to make it easier to paint them uh, all around uh, these and the inside part there uh, other than that there really isn't anything special um, to note about it I would if you get the chance I would also um, just paint up that grill before you put it in just makes it easier that way you can make sure you get all the grey um, and I did in the, around the back here as well just to make sure there was nothing showing and uh, uh, yeah makes it a lot simpler if you're a real stickler um, you can paint this section in here on both pieces um, you obviously get two sections of that so you get it on this sprue as well but um, paint that a dark color as well just to, to hide it because when you put that grill on you will see through that grill to that part there once it, once you've assembled it and if that's not painted it shows up and it does show up on mine I'm, I'm a little bit annoyed I missed that but uh, other than that it's okay now that's pretty much it um, you have a very 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 simple set of uh, decals here I didn't use mine I just sprayed them and uh, I'll show you that in a minute but uh, very very simple the condition of them after so many years in the box is actually pretty good so you should be able to use them without any troubles I would think um, but that's it for the unboxing I mean you can see the detail on the model the detail is actually as I was saying before the detail is not bad that's pretty good um, for a little kit and, a, and an old kit um, but let's just have a look at uh, how they build up so construction with the construction there was a few things that really you know stood out now I took the liberty of purchasing um, a heap of older models uh, off someone who was selling an old old selection so this is something that they built this is not mine I'll show you mine in a minute this just gives you an idea um, I suppose of, of the construction issues that you come across so if you have a look here everywhere on this model and I'll just try and get that to zoom a bit better sorry everywhere on this model there are seam lines well, it's a snap tight kit they are everywhere right? absolutely everywhere so to, to make it nice and neat there is a lot of sanding involved a bit of puttying uh, I actually was tempted to print off a decal um, and put a little bit of nose art on mine and call it the putty queen it was just you know a heap of it in there to to get it uh, all nice and neat but you can see you know it's all around the model it's everywhere uh, easily fixed it's just a little bit time consuming uh, the hardest ones were in here that was a bit hard and as I was saying before when I left those engines out it actually gave me a really good idea because you can see on the person that's made this one the seam at the back here they've actually done not a bad job um, but the front sticks out so on mine it was the front was okay but the back was shocking and that was fine though because I didn't have these parts in there I could actually take the time to putty it up sand it down paint it up all nice and uh, and get it looking pretty good so that was okay this part here around the the back of the cockpit that was quite horrendous I actually ended up putting a bit of pl plastic card in the back here to hide the seam in there instead of trying to put putty in there and sand down it wasn't going to happen um, so I decided that was a good compromise that's pretty much I mean that's pretty much your fit when you put the parts together it's not really good um, so sanding that down putting it in sanding it down uh, was a bit of a chore uh, around the front as well similar problems uh, that was an awkward one to get into just in the nose there uh, sorry just trying to get to zoom there you go just in the nose there uh, it was a bit shocking and up underneath the, the lip there as well was was hard if you can before you sit this section in and the wings in so they basically you'll assemble the whole body um, this section here and the wings go in uh, along with that bit uh, after so they all sort of snap in from the front run some putty along the seams in there clean up those seams before you put those parts in there uh, foolishly I I don't know how I missed them but I didn't I didn't even notice them on mine until I'd actually gone and and um, put these parts in and then it was a bit of a pain to, to putty them. You can remove the parts and everything like that but I glued mine in because you know that's just me, well done. Um, but yeah pretty simple. You can see the decals, that's 
pretty much how the decals are meant to go on. Um, not a huge amount to them, but let's show you the one that I made. So that's a good example of, of issues with the kit. Oh, one last bit too, um, just to show you, you know, another sync mark. Uh, they are, as I was saying, they're, they're everywhere on this model. Um, and you'll notice a lot of them as, you, as, you, as you're putting it together. So they're easy enough to fix. That's that one in there I was saying before, trust me, there it is. You can see it there now it's been painted. Um, but yeah, all right. When this is on the stand, so the little stands were showing before, you can tell this is a clear canopy one as well, as we were saying, they come in the two. With uh, the stand, basically it's meant to sit like that. So you can turn that around. It's meant to sit like that up on the stand. Now, just about everyone you see on the internet is like that. I decided to do a little bit different. The whole idea of these fighters, well, in the in Star Wars lore, the whole idea of these fighters is that they're, they're a heavy fighter, right? So they were, if I'm not mistaken, please correct me if I'm wrong, but these were meant to be um, essentially a replacement for the Y-Wing. So they're, they're heavier, they've got a better armament, uh, much heavier armament, rather, uh, much heavier shielding. They're a little bit quicker, not much. Um, they're still quite heavy and slow, uh, but they can take a punishment and they can dish it out. One feature of them is the body is meant to be able to rotate around the uh, cockpit. right? So you can pretty much, if you think about it, you can pretty much set it any way you want and that's going to be accurate. right? Because the cockpit's meant to be able to rotate um, in, the original, in the original model. So that is going to be accurate no matter how you do it. So that, with that in mind, I filled that hole with plastic card and then puttied over it just to make it a bit quicker and easier for myself. So I filled that up. I then took this end and drilled a hole. Another sink mark. Drilled a hole uh, in this end here. And as I was assembling it, I took some uh, brass rod and drilled it out a little bit with the Dremel just to make sure that it was nice. There was enough room in there for it. Put the brass rod in it and then set up my display base like that. So. Let's show you on the one I've done. All right, so this is the one I have completed, and you can see it sitting there. I'll adjust the camera in a second, but you can see it sitting on the base there. All right, so it's standing upright perfectly. So let's just bring this out now. This will actually detach, so I can take that off. All right, not a problem. Put that away. This is my one. All right, still a tiny bit of a seam line there. Didn't quite get that one right, but the rest of it, not too bad, I reckon. Uh, sanded up really well. Airbrushed it. Uh, so gave it a good dose with the airbrush. I decided I wanted to go... If you had a look at my X-Wing video, I went a little bit darker on that. I decided I wanted to do the same on this one too, because... Hey, look, they're the Rebellion. There's, <laughs> I'm sure they don't just spend a great deal of time um, agonising over their paint schemes. So essentially what I did was I uh, pre-shaded it. So I did uh, some, some pre-shading and some highlights with the airbrush, then went over with my colour coat just to, um, to set the colour in, and then went out and picked out details of the brush. Um, then weathered the model with oils. Now all these things I will show you in how-to videos um, soon, which I'll, which I'll do. One thing I did was I masked out these and I wanted them pretty rough. I didn't want perfect circles. I wanted them pretty rough, it's like they've sort of been field applied and not really um, had a lot of care taken on doing them. So I decided that was a good idea to go with those. Now you see there's bits of uh, colour missing on those decals there. I'll just zoom in a little bit. Um, really what I wanted to do is try and make it a little bit more worn like the rest of the model is as well. Um, and I used a, a liquid mask um, to do that. So I'll show you that in a minute. But liquid mask, oh, I might as well do it now. Hang on a second. Okay, so I don't know if you've um, ever seen this product before, but uh, very, very good. Vallejo, I believe it's pronounced. Uh, I could be wrong. Um, but liquid mask, and very, very simple. All you do is take a toothpick, put a little bit out, take a toothpick, um, and dab it onto the areas you want covered. It dries, it's like a. Um, a latex essentially and it dries very quickly so it dries in a matter of minutes and then you can paint over it um, and, uh, and then all you got to do after the paint dry is just go back with your toothpick and and lift it up so I decided that was a neat idea to do the um, bottom section here as well 
is a darker shade of grey uh, in the painting instructions and in the well in the, on the box art really the painting instructions are quite negligible but um, on the box art so I decided to go and hit it with the light grey went over it with light grey picked out the details I picked out some spots with the um, liquid mask as you can probably see on there and uh, then painted over it with the dark grey just to just to bring out uh, some chipping effect and make it look uh, a bit different there as well. So I did that, the chipping effect all along these sections and and on the other ones. Now it's pretty easy to overdo it, so I mean it's really personal taste as to what you think's too much or too little. Um, so just be aware of that. But you can always fix it if you if you if you're not happy with it. Um, panel shading. So I used as I say, I used um, uh, Windsor Newton oils. Uh, to do those uh, ones like this one up under here that's that one there that's just done with a pastel uh, so just a pastel dabbed on with a brush just to uh, give us a little bit of an effect in there a little bit of scoring um, a little bit of damage and you might see all these little dots all over the model that was done with the Hobby Master um, dark rust applied with a brush so you just uh, dab it on just to give it a little bit of a chipping effect uh, and make it look like it's hard to see, but you can see them there. See all those little dots, just to make it a bit, bit, uh, a bit worn. And uh, we'll go back and have a quick look at the engines. So I did the engines in a met uh, metallic, the same Hobby Master color. Uh, very, very dark on the camera, but um, in person that looks, it looks quite uh, metallic and nice. Looks really good, uh, if I do say so myself. Um, so yeah, fix those up uh, with that there and uh, basically that's it so before one important thing to note before you apply the oils and everything I generally will give the model a really good coat um, with a Tamiya clear so Tamiya clear comes in uh, little aerosol cans uh, basically do that just to set the paint and I find it helps blend the the weathering techniques together really well helps uh, the paint to settle and um, it makes it a lot more receptive for when you're doing the oil coats on the top. Now, I usually do a gloss and um, then do my colours and then run a, um, a matte over it. So just to give you an idea, so not a not a bad tip. Um, and also, if you're going to apply decals, uh, also good idea to hit it with uh, where you, the area you're going to apply decals. Hit it with a um, a, uh, a gloss hit it with a high gloss with the Tamiya, let it dry and that'll help your decals sit down a lot better uh, just in case uh, you haven't tried that before and once the decals are on and dried you hit it again just to seal them make sure they're not going anywhere um, works really well you can see we're talking about with the back of the cockpit there it's just a, a really awkward area so it's hard to zoom in sorry guys uh, so I just really set that with a little bit of styrene sheet just to neaten it up in there as much as I could but uh, look I hope you like it uh, very simple to construct but um, it's well worth taking the time to get rid of the seam lines um, you know, they were all around that section there I just can't zoom in enough to do it um, very worth taking the time to get the get rid of the seam lines um, putty it and sand it and take your time um, if you do, you will get a lovely looking model, I believe. Look, at it's, I reckon it's a fantastic looking kit once it's done. It's pretty simple, um, but just, you know, a bit of tidy ups required. And as I was saying with the stand, um, I've got that little brass receiving rod in there, so I can just insert that back in there. And uh, it's ready to go back into the base. Alright, so thank you very much for joining me. Um, I hope you got some good info out of this one. Uh, if you have any questions or if there's anything you'd like to see, just uh, shoot me a message. I'd love to um, love to show you uh, uh, whatever you're interested in. Uh, there'll be more videos coming up soon, and uh, please uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.